Story Productions presents the Cockover Morning Show, where we weed out the big stories from throughout Sweet Swine County with Bobby Ray and Sally Sue. Good morning, and welcome to the Cockover Morning Show. Once again, Jeff and I are filling in for Bobby Ray and Sally Sue. Jeff, what are you doing? Well, I'm surfing the net. Where's the water? <laughs> Good one, Barbara. Good one. No, I'm surfing the net. Yes. I'm trying to find out where Bobby Ray and Sally Sue went to on assignment. I'm kind of questioning this on assignment thing. I don't blame you. So I'm surfing the net trying to find out where they're at. Well, have you found anything yet? Well, I haven't found anything about them. But what I have found is a really interesting site about Sweet Swine County. <gasps> Sweet Swine County? Yep. What is that called? It's called Sweet Swine Scoop. Sweet Swine Scoop. And you know, it has all the gossip, all the stories, everything that's happening right here in Sweet Swine County. Oh, I need to check this oh, out. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. Don't they have a catchphrase? <laughs> Why, it's funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> I think their catchphrase says it all. And what is that? If it happens in Sweet Swine County, it's news to us. Isn't that a it's great catchphrase? It's news to us. <laughs> I love it. Isn't and how do our great? viewers find Sweet Swine well, Scoop? Well, it's, it's very easy. They just go to ourstorymn.com, which, you know, that's yes. the company that distributes this show throughout Our Story Country. Oh, they're very important. Absolutely. So you go to their site, and then you go to blogs, mm -hmm. and once you go to blogs, there it is, right there. Oh, it's very, how very easy. Cool. So tell us what you've learned at Sweet Swine Scoop. Well, here's a couple that really sounded interesting. Yes. Ronnie P. Silage discovers he's fifth cousin to Ernest T. Bass. <laughs> You know, no from the way. Andy and Mayberry show, yes. our own Ronnie is fifth cousins with him. That's royalty around these absolutely, parts. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Listen to this one. Yes. Medievalist Bart Saxton makes plans. He, you know, he's from uh, Martin County. Yes. He was on this show. He was. Uh, uh, and, yep. he's, and he's a medievalist. He's making plans to form medieval swine right here in Sweet Swine County. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, this is going to be impressive. Here's, That's a, here's another interesting one. The other great one, Cousin John, oh, admits yes. to channeling Ralph Cramden. That makes so <laughs> much sense all of a sudden. Yes. Doesn't it? That looks like a great story. And that's just the beginning. There's hundreds and hundreds here. But oh. unfortunately, nothing about where Bobby Ray and Sally Sue went to on assignment. OK, Jeff, it's time to bring out our guest. From the county of Brown and the town of New Ulm, please join me in welcoming Randy Danielson. <laughs> Welcome, Randy. A pleasure. A pleasure. You look so much younger in person than on TV when I watch the show. So. Well, two hosts. Two oh, hosts. Oh yes, there are two hosts. And, yes, two hosts. And, yes. And, and you're much better shaped oh, than I remember you. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, we're, thank you. we're happy you're here. Okay. Are uh, definitely our favorite guests. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, and, and what you do. Well, I'm Randy Danielson, and uh, I own George's Ballroom in New Ulm, Minnesota. We are not a customary ballroom, as we don't operate on a regular weekly basis. Okay. We, uh, we are more special event type of a business, and so oh. we're not open every weekend, but uh, the building is always there, and it's a very beautiful building just to drive by with the the marquees and things that sure. are on it. And if you see me standing outside, I give tours. Tell us a little bit about the building itself. How long has the building been there? The building was built in 1947 mm -hmm. by George Nyworth, hence the name George's. And he um, operated the building until his death. He was, didn't die in the building, did he? I don't believe he did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there are a lot of people who believe there are noises and he's still there. Oh. And George was an icon in himself. And he um, had his chair and a throne that he sat there and managed it from the day one. And then uh, he passed on. His, his daughter um, couldn't take care of the building at all. And, and finally, I purchased the building at an auction. And we reopened it for special events, not, like I say. Was there a lot of renovation and things that you had to do? Oh, I would yes, imagine. The, uh, it was basically a condemned building, mm -hmm. historical. It was one of the historical buildings in the state was considered uh, endangered to, to be lost. And, and I actually bought it for $1,000 on, wow. on oh, the Oh, my. Auction. And uh, we stuck um, not a lot of money into it. It's very much original 
to what it was and and we're doing more renovations I've taken on a couple partners now and uh, they're gonna do some work and renovations and we're gonna be opening um, another room which was formerly the bowling room and it's gonna be a the wedding bowling room right there was a bar really? a bowling oh, alley wow. and a ballroom so. so when you speak of the bowling room and this room and that room how big a building is this? The building is 36,000 square feet. Oh, wow. And so it's a very large building. It was one of the largest ballrooms. It had the longest bar in the, the Midwest for many, many years. It was advertised as that. So the bar mm -hmm. in the ballroom is about uh, 80 feet long. Now, you had oh, mentioned my. that you didn't have to do too much to the building for the most part. What, Things like that, were they pretty much intact, like the bar? And Everything was exactly the way it was when it was built. Wow. And uh, even the lights, I'd flip on the lights, and, and the lights, uh, there's a lot of neon and, and, and lights. And Was it just a little dusty? It was, <laughs> there, there was some significant damage from, oh, from I roof bet. leaks I thought and it things was like dusty. that. I so bet it was. It was uh, a little on the dusty side, yes, it took... Uh, a lot of cloths to wipe the tables down <laughs> and, uh, yes. and there's you know the seating there was i can't remember right now offhand but there was probably 240 booths in oh. there and um so we can seat 1100 people or something like that and the the capacity is around 2000 in wow. that room did not so know. what kind of uh, events? Do you do weddings? Yeah. We do a lot of weddings. Really? Oh, and, uh, how nice. And so we bring the people in, and it's the nostalgic old wedding, mm -hmm. terrazzo dance floor, big band stage, and, uh, and it's, on a, it's, on, it's tiered the, mm -hmm. until the dance floor, and so um, it's got uh, the really old style look, and we do mm. quite a few weddings. We run a couple of public events a year. Uh, one of them is Bach Fest, which is in February, March every year, and the other one is Polka Days, which is in July. And uh, for the old nostalgia sure. of, the, of the building. And what when the polka great. band's there, it must have that same feel of what it probably did 50 oh, years ago. Oh, I imagine. Ago yes, and, and George had built it for, he wanted to build it so when the people came back from the war in World War II, he said he, he was going to have a place for them when they came back to to enjoy the Pick freedom. Pick up their heels. Freedom, yes. All that and, good uh, music. Now, and, and New Ulm is, is quite the interesting town in itself. A very historic downtown. Very historic yeah. downtown. It's a awesome building. What kind Great. of events are coming up? Poke Days in July. Okay. And uh, then others are just private, more private events. But yeah. Randy, is there a kitchen right on site? There is not a kitchen on site, but we have caterers that, uh, one of them is just a half a block away. So. If Oh, wonderful. And, and they bring convenient. most of their food and they cook right there because it comes right out of the kitchen. Sure. And if, if somebody wanted to book an event or just take a look at the place, can they, how they get a hold of you? All they have to do is make a phone call and wonderful. I'm in town almost all the time. It's 507-351-8203. Schedule Another road tour. trip. Another, Another road, road trip. trip. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we look forward to checking out George's ballroom. We want to thank you for being with us today. Uh, you know what? We should show him one of our special features. Let's. Would you like to see one of our special I would love features? To. Let's go to that one. Would you like to learn more about a community you're visiting? Then stop into their library. Hello, I'm Caroline, a librarian who's doing research for my book, Memoirs of a Librarian. No huge city library can compare with the coziness of the small town libraries in southern Minnesota. With their rich history and commitment to providing information and entertainment to their patrons. Today we'll be visiting Blooming Prairie Library is a branch of the Owatonna Public Library. The library began in 1976 and moved to the city center when it was built in 1992. Preschool story time is held weekly, and big screen movies are shown monthly. The Friends of the Blooming Prairie Library conduct an ongoing book sale in the library. Funds raised are used to provide programs for youth in the summer. The library is open 44 hours each week to serve the community and the surrounding area. The library is located at 138 Highway Avenue South, 
and is open Monday through Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call the library at 507-583-7750 during those hours, or check the Public Library tab on Blooming Prairie's website at www.bloomingprairie.com. Well, this has been a wonderful experience, and I hope you visit this library soon. As for me, I'll be sure to include it in my book, Memoirs of a Librarian. Well, now that was a great report, wasn't it? Another one. This place is so interesting. Absolutely. Say, Randy, we want to thank you for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. Wonderful to have you here. And thank you, Barbara, for being my co-host. This has been great fun filling in for Bobby Ray and Sally Sue. Thank you for letting me promote the new show. Absolutely. And we want to thank you, our viewers, for watching the Cockaber Morning Show, where we read out the big stories from Sweet Swain County and beyond. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.